Dear ladies and gentlemen, salam sejahtera. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Justina Liu Fun Ching, Senior Inspector with the Safety, Health and Environment National Authority. As the regulator for the workplace, safety and health, as well as radiation matters in Brunei Darussalam, China remains steadfast in its belief and commitment that it can make a difference to ensure Brunei is a safe place to work and live. Delivering against the aspirations of the nations under Wawasan 2035, deliverable of quality of life. China believes in raising HSC standards in the workplace and preventing work-related injuries, in particular fatalities. As part of our ongoing drive to reach out to our stakeholders this month, we have declared it to be a safety month. In conjunction with the World Day for Safety and Health at Work, we will this month deliver key messages as presentations to you covering a number of relevant related safety topics. Today, I'm delivering the topic of safety, health and management system, features and factors towards effectiveness. Throughout this presentation, I will provide you the elements of the safety health management system, its effectiveness towards any organisation. The purpose of a safety management system is to ensure the safety, health and welfare of the employees. The management of the organisation must be proactive managing their safety, health and welfare responsibilities and to deal with the responsibilities in a systematic way. It helps organisations to improve their safety health performance by providing information on how safety and health should be managed and in the process help them to comply with legal requirements. A safety health management system means the part of the organisation management system which covers the health and safety work organisation and policy in an organisation including line management responsibilities, the planning process for accident and ill health prevention, and the practices, procedures and resources for developing and implementing, reviewing and maintaining the occupational safety and health policy. The applicable laws in Brunei are the Workplace Safety and Health Order 2009, Regulation 44, Workplace Safety and Health General Provisions, Second Schedule and Regulations for Workplace Safety and Health Construction Regulations. In under Regulation 4, the Workplace Safety Health Construction Regulations, where a contract sum of the building operations or works of engineering construction to be carried out at the worksite is more than 30 million or more, it shall be the duty of the occupier of the workplace to appoint a Workplace Safety and Health Auditor to audit the safety and health management system of the worksite at least once every six months. Should the contract sum or operation works of engineering, which is less than 30 million, it shall be the occupier to conduct and review the safety health management system of the worksite at least once every six months. Or, if it is directed by the authority, to have an auditor on to the site for a safety health management system. There are 14 elements for a successful safety and health management system. They are listed as follows. Number one, safety policy, which includes the allocation and delegation of responsibility for safety. Number two, safe work practices. Number three, safety training. Number four, group meetings. Number five, incident investigation and analysis. Number six, in-house safety rules and regulation. Number seven, safety promotion. Number 8, System for the Evaluation, Selection and Control of Contractors. Number 9, Safety Inspections. Number 10, Maintenance Regime. Number 11, Risk Assessment. Number 12, Control of Movement and Use of Hazardous Chemicals. Number 13, Occupational Health Programs. And the last one is the Emergency Preparedness. In a safety policy, it is to set down clear terms for the occupier's management approach and commitment to safety and define the policy for safety including objective for its commitment to safety. Now, this safety policy shall be relevant to the occupier's organisation goals and expectations and need to the industry. The occupier shall ensure its policy is understood and implemented at all levels of the organisation. Now, the elements of a safety policy shall include safety organisation responsibility, safety and health policy development and review. 
The next element is the safe work practices is to ensure that all works are carried out in a safe manner so as to eliminate or minimize occurrences of incidents. The occupier shall establish and maintain procedures for the safe execution of works. These works procedures are documented as work procedures, method statements or permit to work system. Hence, the elements in a safe work practices shall include types of safe work practices and permit to work system. In a safety training, it is to equip employees at all levels with the knowledge, skills and attitudes which enable them to perform their duties in a safe and efficient manner. The occupier shall establish a process to identify training needs and provide adequate safety training. The proper training record shall be documented and maintained. So the elements of a safety training shall include statutory training requirements, training for management personnel, supervisory personnel and workers. For group meeting, it is to inform and formally address issues and take actions to achieve the worksite safety and health management objectives. The occupier to establish a plan to ensure that group meetings are conducted effectively and records of the meetings are documented and maintained. Safety committee meetings are to set up to address safety issues. The chairman shall be the most senior manager on site and members shall be competent and committed to safety and positive towards safety promotion. The next element is the incident investigation and analysis. This is to establish causes of incidents, derive learnings and to prevent recurrence. The occupier shall establish and maintain procedures to identify and analyze incidents with the objective of implementing specific corrective actions to prevent recurrence. The occupier shall be set up a mechanism to identify and record all incidents at work. The investigation are types of incidents, prompt reporting, competent person responsible for the investigation, investigation procedures, methodology, recommendation and follow-up and hence analysis of incident statistics. The next element is the in-house safety rules and regulation is to ensure all personnel knows their obligations and responsibilities and comply to rules and regulations. The occupier shall establish procedures to ensure in-house rules and regulations are implemented and complied at the work site. In the in-house rules and regulations shall include use of PPE, operation and maintenance of plant, machinery and equipment, handling, storage and use of materials, reporting of hazards and incidents, general housekeeping, removal of fire hazards. It shall be communicated at all levels and review the rules and regulations for its suitability. Inner safety promotion is to develop and maintain safety awareness among all personnel. The occupier shall establish and maintain programs to promote safety at the work site to demonstrate the management's commitment towards establishing and maintaining a safe working environment. So this promotion activity shall include display of safety policy, incident statistics and pictures, safety banners and posters, safety handbooks, etc. The elements uh, shall have promotional activities, safety bulletin boards, recognition of good safety practices, and records of promotional activities. The next element is the evaluation and selection of contractors and subcontractors. This is to ensure that they are aware of their safety obligations on the work site. The occupier shall set up a system to evaluate the safety performance of the intended task. Only competent subcontractors shall be selected for the works. The evaluation of subcontractor safety performance shall include the company safety policy and safety management system, safety plan, safe work procedures, training, etc. The occupier shall establish procedures to ensure that safety requirements in the contract agreements are implemented. For safety inspection, it is to verify that safety provisions and practices conform to worksite rules and regulations and relevant statutory requirements. The occupier shall establish and maintain documented procedures for safety inspections to ensure unsafe conditions, 
and practices are identified and corrective measures implemented. So the types of inspections are such as general regular inspection, safety committee inspection, plant and machinery equipment inspection. The inspectors has to be competent and therefore the inspection methodology and follow-up system has to be pulled through. The next element is the maintenance regime for all machinery and equipment. This is to ensure that all hand tools, plants, machinery and equipment used at the work site are regularly maintained so that they do not present any hazards due to lack of repair and maintenance. The occupier shall establish maintenance program to ensure safe and efficient operation of the equipment. The maintenance program shall include list of hand tools, plant and machinery, schedule of inspection and maintenance, procedure for repairs, record of inspections and maintenance. The next element is the hazard analysis risk assessment. It is to identify and manage existing potential hazards to eliminate or minimize the risk of incidents. The occupier shall establish procedure to identify and analyze all existing and potential hazards. The hazard analysis plan shall include formation of a hazard analysis team, duty and responsibility of the team, hazard analysis method and report, implementation of control measures, and hence risk assessment and risk controls are followed through. The next element is the control of movement and use of hazardous substances and chemicals. It is to ensure that the receipt, storage, movement, use and disposal of hazardous substances and chemicals could be managed to minimize occurrence of incidents. The occupier shall establish a procedure for proper management of all hazardous substances and chemicals, which include flammable, toxic or corrosive substances. There should be a maintenance of register of hazardous material safety data sheet, appointment of competent person to receive such materials, and safe storage and use. Communication and safety training and instructions to the users are crucial. The next is the occupational health programs. It is to protect workers from hazards relevant to general industries such as noise, dust, toxic gas, vapors, and radiation. So the occupier shall plan and implement occupational health programs on hearing conservations and respiratory protection. Also for personal eye protection, protection against radioactive hazards, the prevention of dermatitis and work-related back injuries and sprains. Therefore, in a hearing conservation program, there should be regular monitoring of noise levels, reduction of noise through engineering and administrative control measures. The final element, the emergency preparedness, is to ensure the organisation is ready to face any emergency situation so as to avoid any fatalities, injuries as well as damage to properties. This plan shall be reviewed or tested regularly to ensure its effectiveness. The emergency planning should cover the testing and rehearsing related to equipment including firefighting equipment and fire alarm. The personnel have been trained and formalizing the emergency services and facilities. This is a page showing example of a safety management system whereby there is a checklist to be able to be implemented on your organization. The factors towards effectiveness of SMS, which is the safety management system, the leaders have to be committed, responsible and accountable and so is to promote the culture of health and safety in the organisation. There should be communication between managers and employees and the consultation and participation of workers involved in safety issues is crucial and hence also allocation of necessary resources. So in the health and safety policies, there should be effective processes to identify hazards controlling safety and health risks, and taking advantage of safety and health opportunities. There should be continual performance, evaluating and monitoring of the safety management system and integrated into the organization. So it is aligned to the occupational safety health of policy of the company. Compliance with legal and other requirements are also crucial. So 
Just to wrap up this uh, presentation, the aims of a safety management system that your organization to have a health and safety framework. It manages the prevention of death, work-related injury and ill health. It integrates safety management system into organization strategy and operations. It also integrates into the policy and objective compatible with the strategic direction of the organization. What's the outcome of a safety management system? You will prevent death, work-related injury and ill health to workers and also hence improve and provide a safe, healthy workplace for its workers. Thank you very much.